Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the director's salary and how best for you to be able to process that within QuickBooks Online itself. So if you're looking for a very tax efficient way to make sure you're remunerated for the work that you're doing, then stay tuned to this video. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I'm a Chartered Accountant, a certified UK trainer with a fancy new logo, that QuickBooks chap on the internet, and also head of account here at Boffix. Now, today's video is actually following on from a video we did over on the Boffix channel, and it's all to do with your director's salary. Now, for you people who are not in the know, I would highly recommend you jump over to that video over on the Boffix channel, look for the director's salary video, and to get a real in-depth discussion about why director's salary is so important. But as a quick TDLR, basically, if you have a limited company, declaring yourself as a director's salary can be one of the most tax efficient ways for you to be able to remunerate yourself when you own your own business. And the savings you can make are astronomical. So it's definitely worthwhile considering going through with director salary. But if you have done that, you want to be making sure that you're recording it correctly on your software. And that's what we're going to look at today. So let's not beat around the bush. Let's get straight into QuickBooks Online and find a few ways in which we can declare that director's salary so that you can be as efficient as possible. Let's have a look. Okay, so first of all, what's the easiest way for us to actually get ourselves paid and keep ourselves compliant? Well, by far the easiest way is gonna be using the payroll solution in QuickBooks Online. Now, when you go to the payroll solution in QuickBooks Online, you are first of all gonna be given two options. Do you want to use the standard or the advanced version of QuickBooks payroll? Now I'm going to be showing you the standard version right here right now because for most of you out there, if it's just yourself being paid, this is by far the best way and most efficient way of doing it. If you do have multiple staff members though and they want more complex situations, do consider going over to the advanced version of QuickBooks. And don't worry, we've done plenty of videos on this channel and there's more to come on payroll itself. So first of all, as soon as you log in and you start the payroll the first time, you just need to tell them a little bit about your business. So you can press the let's go option just here and it will ask you, have you paid your employee before? Now in this case, most of the time it's gonna be no. And from there we can say, let's figure if we're in the right tax year. Do you wanna pay the uh, employees in this case before the 6th of April? We're gonna pay after because we wanna put it in that tax year. Do remember though, if you need to back date and you need to bring in information from the previous pack, tax year, that point you're going to have to say before and you want to get that done as soon as possible to avoid any potential penalties or issues like that. But if you want to utilize that tax free allowance that you've got, it's definitely worthwhile getting the before option done. Then you have to fill in all the correct information we've got here. I'm just going through and just putting some fake information in. And then let's set up your employee's pay schedule. I would recommend monthly Gonna make your life a lot easier and then pick that first date so for me i'm going to do the 30th of april and i can say what i'm paying for so i'm just going to say for that month and i'll call it every month when it comes to the pension you just need to go through and make sure that you've got everything set up i'm going to say no to that because i'm a direct only business it will give you advice if you think you need to be set up or not but do take further advice on that one to make sure lastly let's figure out if you can save on your national insurance tax bill Yep, we wanna make sure you do qualify for this if you don't. Again, in that last video, we talked all about it. But yeah, do make sure that if you do, and that you've got the um, and you've got the right elements to it, that you are qualified and you do make sure that gets put in for you. So then you get to add your first employee. And I get to add myself and put an email there as well. Now, the best thing about this is if you're using QuickBooks Online, you get your own online portal to be able to complete that through, and you can actually get your employee to do that for you. Now, in this case, it means that it being me, I just got to do it myself. As you can see, we've invited him to the workforce area, and then you want to be put in what he's actually going to be paid. <laughs> Really important when you are doing this to make sure you select company director. Once you've got your employee set up, then at that point you can actually make 
And at that point you can run your payroll. And one of the major advantages of using QuickBooks Online is then you can set where this money can go to. So in this case, I'm actually going to put it against directly against his wages and salary control account. But you may want to consider going directly against director's current account. If you're not physically going to pay yourself, you just want to account for it. For this one, wages and salary, and then I'm going to put the payment, I'm going to transfer the payment from my bank account. It's worked out the net salary for me. It gives me an opportunity to make some adjustments here if I need to. And all I need to do then is press review payroll. Simple as that, I can confirm and submit. Again, the major advantages of using QuickBooks is it's all going to sync up nicely. So not only are you declaring to HMRC that you want to make this payment and you're going through and make sure everything's all been done completely, but you're also posting a particular journal so that it's going to appear in your books and you'll get that deduction that you need in and the whole point of you doing this in the first place. So on QuickBooks Online, it's already created the journals for me. It's given me a chance to download and look at my pay slips if I want to. and I can change how this looks if I need to. And then also if I look at the journals that I've seen, you can see that it's automatically posted that wages expense in there for me, making my life so much easier. Now, of course, you can opt for the advanced version of QuickBooks Payroll, very similar to what we've looked at in terms of functionality, uh, just a little bit different in terms of aesthetically how that pro data is processed. But ultimately, you're going to get the same result. You're going to put the information into QuickBooks Payroll. It's going to submit it to HMRC for you. You're going to be compliant. It's going to automatically put in those journal entries. But what about if you opt for using another solution? Maybe you've already got a payroll solution that you really like, or you're trying to use HMRC's online tools to be able to do it through there, or maybe your accountant's doing it for you, or you've got a business advisor doing the actual payroll submissions for you. If that's the case, then you need to ensure that you're posting those information into QuickBooks, otherwise you risk not getting the benefit of that salary. So how are we gonna put that in? Well, first of all, let's see what QuickBooks did automatically. Remember how it's showing that we got that payment in on the 30th of April? Well, if I click into the wages figure, click into the account, then you can see that it's creating a journal entry for me. And on the journal entry, it's basically posted against my wages and then against wages and salary control. So if we're using a third party solution, we wanna be doing exactly this. So let's have a look at how we can create one of these from scratch. Let's say from 31st of May, we're gonna process it manually. Well, we'll go to new, other journal entry. From the journal date, we'll do the date that we make the payment of the payroll. Journal number, we'll call him payroll month two. Account, just here, well, we, we, we need the first part of it to go to our expenses control account. We need our first part to go to our expenses account on our profit and loss. Let's say that this time around it's a thousand pound we're paying ourselves. And then what we need to do then is say whereabouts all of the elements go to. Now to keep mine simple, I'm going to go to the wages and salary control account because I'm physically going to pay myself my net salary. And in this case, it's £900. But then I also need to make sure that I know where my PAYE, my payroll liabilities go to. So in this case, I'm going to make sure that I'm putting my payroll liabilities, my taxes, £100, and I want them to there. But actually, in this case, it's £50 of taxes. And I've got some pension to account for as well. Now, making the most of a journal entry, I would put an attachment here. And I'd actually attach whatever document I've got to support this £1,000 being paid. And then I can press save. Now, if I revert back to my reports area, you can see that April, I've already got that posted there. And in May, I've got my £1,000 shown just here as well. What also shown is if I jump into my reports and look at my balance sheet. Well, at this point in time, if I do all dates from report, I've got £50 owed to HMRC. And when I make the payment from the bank account, I would match that against that particular account. I've got £50 of pension. So when I make the payment to the pension people, I would park it off there. And then at the moment, I've still got to pay myself £1,608.33. And I want to show that off there. Now again, if I'm never going to make this payment here, it does make sense to put it against my director's loan account, but just make sure that that's what you intended to do. 
In fact, the director's loan account can be really useful because if you're considering putting, say, £2,000 from your business account to your personal account and you don't want to split the, the, what the wages and the dividends are going to be, then if you post your wages against director's loan and then transfer the £2,000 from director's loan to yourself, then you're always going to be in a better position where at least some of that money you've transferred has already been accounted for, in this case, wages, director salary, and then the rest of it can be dividends or however else you want to declare the, the rest of the money that you've paid yourself. But how do we make it more efficient for ourselves? Well, if I go and revisit that payroll we've just done, and I know that this is going to be the same amount each and every month, then what I can do is I can go to the make recurring option just at the bottom here. From make recurring, I can say that it's my director's salary. I can say it's going to happen monthly on the last day of the month every one month it's going to start now and let's say it's going to end after after eight occurrences and at that point again i can put an attachment there say template i now know that automatically that is going to be posted directly against there meaning that i'm going to make sure that i'm going to be getting that money that i deserve and that everything's going to go through the account as it should do and then there's one more way to make it really efficient for you Remember, company cog, go to tools, go to import data. On import data, you do have a journal entry option. So if you say you've got multiple companies or you've got multiple times you're gonna to need to do this, well, you can download an example CSV file. You can create that journal you need to create. And then basically then you can just upload it each and every time, saving so much time. For us, we have this all set up for all of our clients, whoever on director salary, Every time we take that client on, we'll just upload that CSV file, get that information in. Recurring transactions are great for stuff that needs to happen in the future because you can set it to automatically go and post against it for you. Putting that information in, making your life so much easier. But unfortunately, you can't do recurring transactions in the past. So I like to import the data to save me a ton of time and be able to put that information in there nice and quickly. Final Brucey bonus tip though, don't forget that if you have got to duplicate, don't forget that any transaction in QuickBooks, you can go to more and you can go to copy and you could actually then quickly create the 30th of June, 2020, month four, make any adjustments you need to. So maybe I'm gonna pay myself a nice little bonus that time or whatever it's gonna be. And then there's 1,300 this time and then it's 100 there and 100 there. Save and close, quick and easy. There's really is great ways where you can save a lot of time. And then if I look at my report this time around, you can see I've quickly gone in and put that director salary in there as I needed. There you have it, a few ways of making sure that you get that director salary in your business. Now remember the most important thing is actually declaring it in the first place, using some form of software to be able to show that payroll. Again, we would highly recommend considering the QuickBooks one. If you are looking to get QuickBooks payroll, Look at my links below. We've got some discounted values on that for you on our e-store at the Boffix e-store so you can get yourself over there if needed. But the most important thing is declaring it. How much you declare? Well, head over to that Boffix video to look at it a little bit more detail what might be right for you. But basically, in a nutshell, what you want to be making sure is you are declaring it and then at that point, you can make sure that you're making the most out of it as well. Hopefully that's really helped you get to grips with it and you can see some other skills in there in terms of getting data into QuickBooks quickly. I'm using that recurring template option or by importing the data or even something as simple as just copying a transaction that's already there can really speed up your time and make sure you're getting data in there really quickly. Let us know below if that's something that you've been using or if you've got a better way of getting data in there or any software out there that you recommend that you like running payroll for. I know that a lot of software providers now are starting to get app integrations directly into QuickBooks. So just like we did with QuickBooks there, where it's automatically creating those all important journal entries for you, your software can do the same as that. TDLR, make sure that you're getting the most out of your director salary. Don't lose that allowance if you've got the opportunity to use that allowance. And as you can see, it's dead straightforward to make the most out of it. There's a lot of tax savings if you do this right, and we want to make sure you get every piece of tax out of there as you can.
My name's been Aaron Patrick. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. Let us know below what you think of it. Make sure to like, subscribe, share, all that sort of stuff to make sure as many people as possible can get this wonderful advice. My name's been Aaron Patrick. It's been a pleasure to do this video for you and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. I can get him out of my head I don't care what we do, everything's really new Even if we stay in bed My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah You know I want him now, 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 now My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah Hello and thank you for watching that video. What you may not know is this channel that you've watched this video from is part of a wider group. That wider group is called Apple Core Production. And the three channels that we have involved are as follows. Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks chat. Boffix Tax Tip. Finally, we have Apple Core Live and Geeky. All the links and everything are down below in the description, but it really mean a lot to us if you can go and give a like to the other channels as well.